Showtime! <laughs> 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 Episode 2 of Weekly Wrestling Ramble, and as always, I am joined today with the man, what side is it, this side, that side, Todd. Hello! Nice to be back, second week in the trot. Hi. That's uh, what, what did they call it, the begin is the means to go on or something like that? Begin as you mean to go on, yes, you're right. <laughs> as J-Mac will always tell you, I'm never one for uh, reciting slogans and what also <laughs> will. <laughs> it's like we're on a, a podcast recently with a guy. And I was like, yeah, people buy things with their money. <laughs> and everybody was like, <laughs> of course they do. But, but I actually meant to say, you know, people vote really with their money. Oh, right. Things okay. Really, but it is what it is. There. Um, for all you guys that are joining us again this week, um, you've either found us on YouTube or on Podbean, Spotify, everywhere that you can basically get podcasts. Thanks for doing so. Make sure you subscribe, like, tell your pals about it, leave us a review, all that cool stuff. Hit the subscribe subscription button <laughs> have the subscribe button uh, at the button for the subscription on the subscribe which you can see below uh, yes. and we'll keep this we'll keep this moving so todd how's your week in wrestling been so far uh yeah i mean i think everybody's week in wrestling if you've been keeping up to date with uh, current events that like we spoke in the last show um you can see it's been quite emotional um maybe not a lot of storylines been Furthered on, at least in AEW, but um, certainly Raw and SmackDown uh, keeping their retrospective trains on track. Yeah, whenever on earth they're going. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna today we're gonna talk about this week in wrestling, um, and then at the end of the show we're gonna tell you about a cool wee thing that will be coming next week for the the third episode of the weekly wrestling ramble. Do you know what yeah. do you know what would have been cool if we had if Howard Finkel was still alive, we could interview him and have him say. Now time for the weekly wrestling ramble, but we'll just have to settle for Justin Roberts. In fact, we could maybe find a good impersonator. You know, uh, I think I uh, uh, could a, have a, possibly. a hard Finkel impersonator. Uh, uh, maybe, but definitely not Justin Roberts. No, otherwise we'd never get on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is a dad. The other is also a dad. They both have houses. They're both from Scotland, ladies and gentlemen. Can it just it going for fucking ever? <laughs> Am I right in saying Justin Roberts was the one that Daniel Bryan did try to assassinate, isn't it? Yes, yes. He choked him yeah. out with his tie. It's like maybe he knew what was coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think since he's opened up in uh, AEW and been allowed to creatively do what he wants, we kind of understand now why Vince McMahon was like... That's kind of how AEW has kind of gone as far. Not for every one of them, but there's a lot of WWE talents that have came across and you've gone... Eh, what? I'm looking at you, Miro. Um, this is a Miro pop show. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, so I uh, will just kind of we'll get straight in it. We're going to talk a little bit about the this week in in wrestling. So we'll kind of we'll start it off with Monday Night Raw as that kind of began our week on Monday, the twenty eighth of December, the final Raw of twenty twenty as we enter twenty twenty one. Um, so Raw kicks off with the the Brody Lee place card, like the you know rest in peace, John Huber. AKA Luke Harper, obviously mentioning Luke Harper just because that was his WWE character. Um, what what I've seen on the on the internet is people don't think that was enough of a, a tribute to someone that worked there for as long as he did and was revered by so many. What do you think? Do you think that the the placeholder card at the start of the show was enough? Um, well, uh, to be honest with yourself, I may be on the other side of the fence here because I feel that in recent times WWE have only really and at least when wrestlers have passed, they've only celebrated those who were really, really had a big part to play in their history. I mean, you most maybe look at the most recent example being Pat Patterson, um, who, of course, I mean, with no offence to Brody Lee, probably played a bigger part in WWE history of than course. Brody Lee, Luke Harper did. But given Luke Harper's role, and he was there for a little while, but he was never more than a mid-card player, you'd really say, yeah. Um but to see him given the tribute to what he did, and also, I mean, maybe it wasn't so much in the show, but there was a lot of stuff online from a lot of current WWE alumni, um, or on current roster, should I say. And I was, I suppose I shouldn't say I'm surprised, but I was surprised. It's maybe a bad slight in WWE, because they don't usually tend to do that for wrestlers who've passed away, especially those of uh, Luke Harper's level in the yeah. company. So... 
people saying it wasn't enough. Um, I can maybe understand your argument, but I honestly feel that WWE in the position what they are, for them to do as much as what they've done, um, it's more than what they've done for some others who've passed away who maybe even had bigger roles in the company, you could argue. I don't know what you think of that, Kevin. But I kind of think, you know, what is enough? Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. Does there really need to be a competition between two companies to who could send off someone who's passed away? I think any kind of tribute the fact that they even acknowledged someone who is no longer with a company that left Correct. the company and was like, do you know what? I left WWE because A, B and C. And I mean, he did kind of respectfully speak about WWE and his time in there was was good aside from the creative side. But he, he'd essentially jo- jumped ship and joined the, the other side. But what this kind of proves is that WWE are not, you know, they're not bitter. They, they, they gave him a, a tribute. But here's another thing. What if they put that place, you know, the place... Um, holder in front of the the show because they were given AEW the the stick to run with. They they knew that he's an active or was an active member of AEW. So maybe that was their way of actually showing respect and saying we acknowledge we're acknowledging this, right? But we're going to let these guys do it because that's where he was running. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, to maybe I was going to bring this up later on, but I might as well bring it up now while it's um, you know relevant. Is I like how when AEW when they did their tribute, they weren't against. Um, they had a montage at the end, of course, for Brody Lee, but they included pictures and things from current WWE superstars. I mean, you had Bray Wyatt in there, you had Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't. It was. It was quite nice to see that they weren't trying to. You know, go out their way not to acknowledge the other company. Yeah, I think I AEW maybe did a bit more than WWE on that side, but that's not surprising. Uh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just. I think people should just be kind of happy. You know, WWE did recognise this because um, it shows you they're not salty, is what you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe think they have been in recent years. There was there was a tweet from Vince McMahon himself. You know, everybody you in that company have all said, you know, just how they feel about it. I, I just don't think it need as much. That week was going to be dedicated to the memory of him anyway. Absolutely, and they knew that AEW would have you know the banners right. So I, yeah. I, I think. Th- it shouldn't be a competition. And, you know, see if WWE did do the 10 bell salute and the whole tribute. And the, oh, no. Right? Be criticised. Right? Exactly. It'd be, oh, of course, you've got to one-up AEW. It doesn't matter what, what they would have done or not done. It was always going to be bitched about. But I think, you know, just any kind of tribute towards a guy, the guy that, you know, they all knew is, is good enough for anybody. Everybody else puts a tweet out, you know? So I agree. I agree. That's exactly how it is. So mo- moving on from Brody Lee, God rest his soul. Um, Miz regains his money <sighs> in the bank briefcase. Now, the reason I bring this up, right, when I was taking my notes, I thought, and this is kind of how I work with the, the the wrestling angle of things. If it doesn't interest me, if, it, if, if I can skip it, if I feel like skipping it, I, I will not talk about it. Right? I'm just not going to. So I take notes on the show based on what I actually want to talk about because it's made me want to talk about it, right? Yes. Here's how it goes. <laughs> the fact that they're giving Miz the, the case back makes me think, are they doing something with this? Can, are they, do they have plans? Because I'm just going to put this out there. I did not hate the Miz headline in WrestleMania or beating Randy Orton by cashing in his first you know, case and winning the title. <laughs> I'm all for Miz yeah. regaining the WWE Championship. No, I, I, I here's what I, this is the first thing. Funny enough, I wrote on my uh, list of notes here because I'm like yourself. I, I, this show is going to make me watch Raw and SmackDown more often, especially this coming Monday, which is a legend show. I'm all about my legends. But um, <laughs> I watched it. I watched the segments here, and this is the one that caught my eye because I thought, well, how are they going to do that? And it literally was a case of a guy walks out with a briefcase. I don't, and I'll say a guy walks out because I don't have a clue who this fucker was. <laughs> Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce. Not a fucking clue. That's how <laughs> out of touch I'm with WWE. So I apologise to anybody who's like Adam Pearce is the fucking world right now, man. I doubt it. But anyhow, I liked the way that Miz and Morrison sold it because um, they did the best they could with this. But this honestly reeked to me of a uh, ten years time. We're gonna have the something to wrestle with episode on the Miz, and um, Conrad Thompson's gonna ask uh, who booked this shit. We already um, had. They already done the Miz. I know, but on this segment, we're going to have oh, a Miz part thing. two, and Bruce Pritchard's going to go, there was nobody else better for Money in the Bank, so we just give it back to oh, Miz. No. It's going to be something like that. That's what it felt like. It felt like a total Bruce Pritchard of, nobody else is better for it at the minute. So The, thing about, Miz, <laughs> the thing about Miz, right, is uh, 
Miz is a credible world champion, but only, only when he has a heater with him. The Miz is the opportunistic little rat bastard mm. that sneaks in, right, and takes a title that makes you angry every time he, every time he wins it, and yeah. then makes you even more angry when he rubs it in your face, and you know fine well he didn't, he didn't do this on his own. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And I think there's a place like that for a, for a WWE champion. Yeah, absolutely. He's kind of got that edge vibe about him. And this kind of, you know, Money in the Bank is kind of, whenever you mention Money in the Bank to me, I automatically think of Edge. He's kind of like the guy who originated this whole gimmick. And I like Miz. I mean, Miz has got longevity. He's the best poster man, or what's, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Um, for, for yeah, I can't think of this word. People will be screaming it. Um, publicity man. I, I, it's not the right word I'm looking for, but he's like the poster child. Hit. No, it's definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. He's given talk shows and things like that. He really represents himself well. Uh, well, he's good in the ring. Um, for me, he is. He could be a top level guy. It's just the way he's being booked at the minute. Um, I personally hope that um, we can maybe get a feud out of him and John Morrison. Maybe it would elevate John Morrison a little bit. I think he's absolutely crying out for it but mm. um i have my doubts whether they've got plans for that but yeah i think you're right i think they wouldn't give the money in the bank back to miz if they didn't have um views with him for bigger things at the minute i honestly think they just are you know what let's just keep it on at the minute and we'll figure it out as we go because we know that as much as drew is doing a good job at the minute in time he's only going to hold off that thing for so long yeah. and i think miz is probably next in line but when that is Wow, that would be pretty cool. If, if, if Miz is next in line, that would be, that'd be pretty cool. You kind of touched upon it Who there. Knows? Next week is a Legends Night, and I think yeah. the, the connotation Ooh. to the Legends Night, I don't think it's being received by the fans as it usually would, because we can clearly see it's, it's like a ratings grab, which is what WWE kind of really need at the moment. Yeah. But I think, you know, I'm never not going to be happy to see the Legends. The only thing is, the one thing you look forward to when the legends show up is the pop, that yeah. audience participation, the feeling like living vicariously through the audience <laughs> that are there in, you know, there in the building. And we can't do that because we're going to have to, we're then going to have to hear <laughs> like, like the, yes, yes. Right. It's, it's almost like, do you know what it's like? It's like the guy that holds up the wee sign to the audience and says applause. Boo. You know what I mean? You know, I'm, you know what I'm going to really like about Legends? I've got a theory of this. I was kind of kiggling. I, I made myself laugh today. I thought to myself, next week we are going to get Vince McMahon's interpretation of where the Legends are. And was, <laughs> exactly. Like, he's going to be in charge of the Legends pops. So <laughs> you're going to have Shane McMahon. Oh! oh Shawn yeah. Michaels. Oh! <laughs> Triple H will blow the fucking roof off. Uh-huh. Um, and then <laughs> who else is booked? At Adam? Eva Marie will come out and... Ah! <laughs> if, if legends out, if a legend comes out to a shite pop you know that Vince, is, <laughs> Vince <laughs> Carle- Carlito's booked for it Carlito, Carlito. could you imagine oh. actually this would be more entertaining right it's absolutely ridiculous in like a family guy skit but could you imagine if it just had Vince on commentary doing the pops instead of crowd noises it would be Vince's rear <laughs> 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 That would, be hard <laughs> that would be hilarious, man. That would be hilarious. <laughs> that would actually put the ratings for the roof. If Vince McMahon was going to do the crowd noise based on his... Um, you, know, you know, it's funny. I it. thought to myself, I thought to myself, <laughs> do you know, just having Vince even back on commentary would be something. Oh, man. Uh, even for one... See, if it was a legend... I, Legends night, you could probably get away with it, but let's be honest, is he, we, we, do, we don't see a lot of Vince nowadays. Last time we've seen him at The Undertaker, um, and he's, he's, he's not this, unfortunately, he's just getting old, man. It's not his fault. It's just age. It catches just, up with everybody. But Just just to kind of put this in perspective, mm. um, Vince's mum is still alive. Oh, they made a strong stuff, though, weren't they? Right, right. So, if you think <laughs> freaks getting, of nature. If you think we're getting shot of a uh, good old Vinny Mac in the next ten to twenty years, oh, uh, no. not going to happen. Not. I hope not. I hope Vince McMill, McMahon standing Vince at my McMill. ten bell. <laughs> McMill, Vince McMahon standing at my ten bell. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <at> my ten bell. <laughs> he'll be the first. He'll be the first guy that comes out as a vampire or something. Like that. Vince McMahon wishes you luck in your future. 10 bell. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh no! Go on, then. so that'd uh, be pretty Vince McMill. Vince McMill. It's McMill. McMill. <laughs> That's a meme. That's uh, a meme. Vince the, McMill. The alter ego of Mister McMahon, Vince McMill. That'd be hilarious. Um, so I, so that it should be quite fun to just kind of see what they do with Legends Night. I imagine it'll just be one of those things where someone will show up backstage and then uh, someone else will walk into the frame. Eighteen people playing poker with the APA. Uh, <laughs> 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 Bam! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll probably see the boogeyman. Show. It's gonna. It's, you, right, it's I don't know why I remember this now, but do you remember that after Drew McIntyre, um, one one against Randy Orton and all legends helped to boot, and then like the next week on Raw, <laughs> <laughs> they were all in the backstage in a room and he put the night vision goggles on. <laughs> How fucking stupid was that? I, know. You just, I just heard all the noise, and then there's Ric Flair and John Ryan was all fucked. Night vision goggles. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> but it was the way it was like a. <laughs> and you might as well have had one of the things that was. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's a Vince McMill fucking oh. weekend, isn't it? Do you that's know what, bit... right? Uh, uh, We'll get on to him in a minute, but see Randy Orton, right? See, I've not watched a lot of WWE, but see whenever I've seen Randy Orton this year, I go, you know what? You you are the fucking guy. Roman Reigns is doing a great job. Mm-hmm. I've got to speak about Drew, but see, he's had a great year, man, because he just does not give a shit about what he's given. He will just take it, he will do it, and he will make it good, regardless if it's good or not. Which brings, a, brings me to my next point. <laughs> he... Uh... Alexa Bliss invited Ra- do you know do you know what I thought was pretty awesome so the Raw kicked off with Alexa Bliss you know on the swing set uh, and Randy Orton comes out and then she's like do you know what I challenge you to a match later and he's like fine I thought that'd actually be awesome a match between Randy Orton versus you know male versus female uh, it'd be cool to see Alexa get some kind of offence but then just for Randy to obliterate her just playing like, you fuck right that would have been really cool um, but then it kind of turned into something where, and it was memed heavily. So she pours petrol. It's a, nice. it's a prop petrol that she got from her. Oh, pour, prop petrol, I was. <laughs> it's, it's water. Come on. <laughs> ah, clearly, it's clearly water. Which then, um, <laughs> then she so she uh, she douses herself in it and then leads it to Randy and hands him matches. Right to which it was then memed. That picture was like, I know, I know he's good looking. Uh, but fuck's sake, because it's ringing and she's wet as hell and under her. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's good looking, Alexa, but fuck's sake, get a load of yourself. <laughs> but um, so this, you know, and and then he lights the match and Raw ends. It's like, well, I can see what they've done there. I know why it ends. But are, are we just to believe next week that, oh, well, he set her alight, he's just missed it? Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, I'll be honest, I don't know. Right, first first things first, right? These two did the best they could. Especially, I've, I've got to give props to Alexa Bliss. I mean, um, she's really taking this character and running with it and, and doing everything she can. She's proven herself a really good actress and a really good promo. And the whole swing mm-hmm. set is a good image that we've never really had before. Yeah, but true. I, I mentioned it very briefly. I really do not like this whole fiend Alexa Bliss nah. thing they're going for. I um, like it. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not, it's not like the shits or anything like that. It's just mm. I'm not as intrigued as I sh- feel I should be at this point. I don't know. Maybe this is because I feel like these type of storylines need to have a bit more mystique around the characters. Um, I've previously had my reservations about Bray Wyatt and his social media presence while in this character. Um, you know, it's one thing. His, his friend passed away. Um, you know, he's put a post out about that, which was really a nice post. That's that's fine. That's there's no issue with that. I mean, I wouldn't wouldn't begrudge the man for that, but I think they just need to deal with that aspect. I think they need a bit more mystique about that character. Yeah. Maybe that's what they're doing. I don't know. They're obviously taking him away to reinvent him a little bit. They're obviously their tweaks are wanting to make. So we'll see how that happens. Um, I don't really see where the Alexa Bliss thing is going, but you know what? We'll wait and see. Randy Orton is the best guy they can book in with the fiend at the minute, and I hope it's still got legs in it. Because if one thing you can say about The Fiend so far is he's done okay, but he's not had a rivalry that's lasted months like we used to. I'm thinking, maybe to use Randy Orton as an example, you think about his programme with The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just WrestleMania, it was Survivor Series. Storylines used to go on for months, man. 
mm-hmm. sometimes almost the best part of it, like h- half a year. And I, I think that there's a lot of short-term booking rather than long-term booking in WWE right now, at least from what I've seen so far. Yeah. But I and feel this is a feud that could should continue to be booked. Um, yeah. Another thing as well, though, there is a bit of history there already with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. Yeah. So, you know, so if anything, it kind of... It does kind of come full circle, but I know what you're saying. It would be really cool to, to see something last a bit longer than what it has. Are you, I mean, I, I don't know if you're like me. I kind of feel like they are referencing his old gimmick a lot more um, than they used to. I mean, I thought that was the case. Like, we made this gimmick to get away from that gimmick. I wasn't that successful. But they do, he does like to refer to it quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know how I feel about that. But hopefully, Hopefully we'll see what kind of comes of it. Um, yeah, I suppose. Gonna, and then we can maybe just be happy, like, well, got you. You know what I mean? Uh, it could be something pretty awesome. It'd be pretty yeah, cool. Absolutely. Well, mm. we'll wait and see. But um, I mean, see this. I mean, when they get back in front of crowds, which I think WWE should at least make an attempt to do so soon, it'll be good to kind of get a, we'll be getting a better gauge of who is over, who's popular. Because at the minute, you can only kind of go by what people are saying online. But I don't think that's a. I yeah. engaged because there's not everybody who's at these shows are, have got an online presence. But no, that's true. What um, what were your some of your takeaways from Raw? Um, I've got a, cu- a couple of notes here. Um, this one's not going to be popular at all, but I think Babyface Drew can be a bit cringy. Maybe that's because, like we said last night, uh, last week we're Scottish and we kind of find this whole Scottish garb a little bit cringy. You cool cats and kittens. I don't know. Um, maybe you just need to. I, I just think they're booking him too, Babyface. Um, he's kind of losing that ag- aggressive streak. Yeah. They know, need to turn a- his. If, if he was a. If he was a. A guitar chord. They need to turn the distortion up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he's too cookie cutter at the minute for yeah. me. And you know, I, I get your baby faces, are supposed to be, but he's not a cookie cutter baby face for me. I think he needs to have, as you say, a bit of edge. Uh, the kind of guy, the, the kind of guy that you'd ask for a picture with in a bar, but you'd watch how you ask him. Ah, exactly. He doesn't need to be Stone Cold Steve Austin, but he needs to. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean by that. Absolutely. Uh, he's got he's got his championship match against Keith Lee next week, which will probably end in shenanigans because I think they're still trying to keep him Keith Lee strong as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they're going to. I make a prediction <clears throat> right now. I think they're going to have Keith Lee win the Royal Rumble. Um, it's a, probably a decent shout. Um, that's unless they've got any plans to bring anybody back, I suppose. But uh, there's nobody at the minute kind of sticks out for me. But it'd be a good shout. He'd be a good contender for that. Um, I think the next guy would be a fantastic shout for the Royal Rumble and maybe could set up, I don't know. I think that Omos, who's kicking about with AJ Styles at the minute, I mean, I don't know what his promo's like or anything, but my God, is that guy got the look. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah. He is huge. He has got, like, he has got the look of a guy who I'm like, yeah, he could, if he's got a good promo and he can work, he'll be money, I, yeah. I personally think. Um, I was thinking about AJ Styles. I was watching him. I was kind of like, you know what? Watch his little segment, and he was challenging um, Elias. Elias isn't really up to much nowadays, either. And I got to thinking um, about him and Sami Zayn, and those two just kind of seem to. Well, Sami Zayn, um, of course, is on SmackDown, but they kind of fall into the same bracket for me at the minute. Mm-hmm. I think you you said to me off podcast last week. You said I've got a theory. I think AJ Styles will be at AEW before the end of the year. I suppose that would be a New Year prediction for you. Um, so I don't know how I don't know if you want to elaborate on that a lot of that. I thought. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're aware, obviously, that you know last year when when they made the cuts, they cut his two best friends from the show. Oh yeah, yeah, Gallows and Anderson. Yeah. Af- right after he convinced them to stay, they missed out on a, bi- a big money deal. That's right. Undertaker killed them in storyline. Um. <laughs> so. So they, they missed it on opportunities to stay after AJ kind of... AJ's had a bit of a bad taste, and he also... He made a lot of money on... What was it called? Mixer, which is like Twitch. So he's, yeah. a, he's a hell of a gamer. And yeah. WWE have shut that down. There's a lot of things that that AJ Styles is not happy with in WWE, which, which has been reported. And then when you look at how he's been booked since these kind of things, mm. you can kind of see it. Um, so I think what it is is I think I think WWE and Vince McMahon have all all faith in AJ Styles, but I think they know somewhere within them, especially when he's been online saying, "Don't trust Paul Heyman; he's a liar." You know, 
Um, my it's mixer, bad, like. he goes, he goes, my mixer's only gone for now, right? And then when asked, would you join AEW? He's like, of course I would, right? So <laughs> with that oh, yeah, on the <laughs> with that on the table, right? I think WWE are like, well, let's not put too much into him over this until until we, you know, until we are sure, right? I don't, I think the confidence has always been there with AJ Styles. It obviously, it has. He skipped NXT and came straight in at the Royal Rumble, right? It wasn't even there a year and was mm. WWE champion. They yeah. know his worth. He knows his worth. And I think it's right now it's a game of I'll show you my hand if you show me yours. I think. And that's just, again, there's no fact behind it, well, right? It's other than some of the things, right? And it's just how I would say that's how I feel based on what I'm seeing. It could be something, comp- I could be absolutely wrong. But that's kind of what I would imagine that both of them are just not wanting to show their hands because they, they don't want to put too much into him in case he runs to AEW with that momentum. Yes, and if anybody's yeah. listening to this thinking to myself, oh wow, could you imagine if AJ, AJ Styles joined AEW? Well, let's not speculate on this. Let's, let's talk about what it would look like. He'd probably have his fucking PlayStation turned off by Orange Cassidy as well if he had his... <laughs> um, I, I disagree. I think... I, I just... <laughs> no, I don't think... I think AJ going to AEW would... would Bring the company. Up. He's an established. I'm, 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 I'm joking, of course, but he's an established wrestler. But I cannot help but if every WWE wrestler is kind of going across the AW, I'm going to have that little bit of salt with it. The thing is, though, yeah. the thing is, with with the guys like Miro, <clears throat> Rusev, right? We saw him as Rusev. We never see like AJ Styles was the phenomenal one from TNA from Japan from WWE. There's no reason yeah. he would go to AEW and drop that and be like, this is the real me. He's always been the real him. Yeah, and he you know would I mean? be AJ Styles in AEW as well, wouldn't he? So yeah, And do you know what? I think AEW is perfect for some for someone like AJ Styles. As I think he would really, really... He'd be re- used really well there. And I think he... If anything, AEW needs AJ Styles. AJ Styles doesn't need AEW, regardless no, of whether he was no. at WWE or not. Absolutely. You know? if, he, if he was to join AEW... Um, if he was, which is not happening anytime soon, I don't think, but if he was, he would have to be put in a title picture right away and he would need to win it pretty sharpish as well, mm-hmm. I think. But yeah. anyway, we, we speculate, rumour and innuendo, but we'll see if that prediction comes true. And if it does, well, I don't know, we'll give you a prize of some sort. <laughs> Yay, I love prizes. <laughs> I, love prizes. <laughs> I don't know what you want to talk about next. I don't know if you want to move into SmackDown or what um, so- you are. Uh, we'll, we'll go chronological here, yeah. So on the 30th sure. of December 2020, last show of the year for AEW, it mm-hmm. was it was billed as the Brody Lee tribute, which was moving. It was very it was a very yeah. very selling. So we'll kind of just kind of talk a little bit about the 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 tribute for Brody Lee. Um it was pretty much full on a tribute oh, show. Yeah, I mean absolutely. I've heard you've heard of the you know the raw after someone passes and it's Clearly, but this was like, like to the point where you know Brody Lee's, part of me, Brody Lee's son chose the main event match with his favorite wrestlers and stuff. I mean, it almost reminded me of like when someone's rich parent hires an indie promotion for a birthday party, <laughs> right? Not no disrespect at all. Yeah, yeah, I, you, I know what you mean, though. Right? You know the. And I mean, I suppose that's never really been done in wrestling, and it was really touching. And I think if, if John Huber could see that, he would. He he himself would. You know, it's the perfect way to cap off his career yeah. and the company and, that he was in. It's a difficult show to speak about because, it, unlike WWE, it wasn't really a show that progressed anything for storylines. There was there was maybe one progression, I suppose, but um, it was it was pretty much this is. Uh, the AEW's raw his own moment. It was very much um, a lot, very heavy Dark Order focused, and Dark Order turned face for the night. It feels, um, and I can understand it. But um, yeah, this was this was this was really was what you say a tribute show rather than an, an episode of AEW Dynamite. Um, of course, what was you had um, Dark Order was virtually involved in just about every element of this show. Of course, you had the wrestlers around the side, including the sun. The 10 bell salute was really quite, you know, poignant, as was the the, the last segment, which we'll speak about. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's difficult uh, to critique it. Have you ever seen a 10 bell salute where the, the, you know, the wife and children are standing right there? I mean, that's very inclusive, isn't it? 
for, for what I it suppose, was. I suppose you know, that's I mean, the first time that. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, at least, you know, that we're not already on the roster. Yeah. Like, it's got more similar... I mentioned Owen Hart there. It's got more similarities to Eddie Guerrero than anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I know Eddie Guerrero was a... You know, he'd been at WWE a lot longer than AEW, but it was the same type of wrestler in his prime taken suddenly. Um, and it, you know, the, the reaction was very... Um, forgive my pun, raw to it, you know, mm. everybody was still very, um, yeah, still very shook up about it. Yeah, I mean, I think for with regards to the, the Dark Order, uh, I think we've seen we've seen things from the Dark Order that we've never seen before, like John Silver, like holy moly, that just reminded me of Daniel Bryan. Yeah, you know, who John Silver is right. Yeah, no, he's a good yeah. worker. He showed right. himself he had a match but, against uh, Orange Cassidy, right? Really good. And we never seen that <clears throat> from him. Beforehand, no, no, also, Not um, yeah, no, absolutely. It's shown a spotlight. I think he's got about he could have a future in that company, um, if he's booked correctly. Um, I kind of got the feel of him that you know he was kind of booked as the I know you got Evil Uno, but John Silver felt like the second man in the Dark Order the way it was being booked. And I think that that may be what they do if they're going to continue it. Personally, I think the Dark Order should cease to exist but I don't think that's the way they're going I think they were quite clear about that I think you know I think it's pretty cool that if it does cease to exist you know a year from now on the anniversary of his passing you know each member of the Dark Order that's still with the company involved in the different storyline going down different paths it'd be cool to have a wee nod where they're on kind of you know that way where A leads to B B leads to C and then they kind of just realise oh wait a minute we're all in the ring together and they just kind of acknowledge that they used to be the Dark Order to kind of get a proper fan reaction. The same way that when uh, Drew McIntyre, Jinder Mahal and, you know... He, Slayer. Right? Yeah. He, whenever they're in the ring together and, and they kind of just turn to look at each other, the, the audience are there. They like, have that Here we go. Yeah. 3 AMB. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how, how prominent they were on the show. They were yeah. jobbers, right? People respect it and love it just to see these three people again in the ring. I think That's right. People a moment like, like that... Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think if, if there was a moment, like if they were to get rid of the Dark Order, I, I would say that there's no any reason that they couldn't do it down the line where there's a new kind of, a new lease of life in it where it becomes something different after they've all kind of established themselves. But to have them running about in the wee masks and stuff, you know, that was Brody's thing. Yeah, it yeah. just, for me, it does, it does, it's like having the Four Horsemen without Ric Flair. Yeah, it can kind of go two ways. I mean, it can either. I think it's looking like it's going to continue. They might be doing that more of tribute to Brody than anything else, and maybe that's the correct way to do it. I'm certainly not a professional of these things, but ways to be seen. I thought it was really nice to see Eric Rowan as well. Um, I like how they used Eric Rowan as well. His actual name. Yeah. Yeah, well, Chris Jericho used it before they corrected him to say it. Eric Redbeard, Chris. <laughs> but then they continued to say it, though. They did yeah. still continue to say it. And the, what's people might big Eric Rowe fans might shoot me down for this, but I was quite glad that right after that they weren't like, and we've signed Eric Rowe and he's a yeah. WAW superstar. Yeah. Um, if they're going to sign him, fine. But tonight was not the night to, as I'm sure they all ag- agree, to book him. I, I really, I don't think AW needs another guy like that myself. But um, well, here's the thing: um, Pro Wrestling yeah. Torch uh, actually commented on it, saying that they've not signed Eric Rowe. It was a one-time deal. And That's I know, yeah. and I know that Eric Rowan actually, he he had said in a previous interview, I think it was on Talk Is Jericho, he said that he was going to stay clear of AEW only out of respect for Brody Lee because he knows that any time he and Brody Lee were in the same place, it was yeah. only inevitable that they'd do the exact same thing. Oh, and, he, brothers, yeah. and he he wanted to respect him enough to stay out his way and let him do his thing. Just kind of shows the kind of bond that they guys had. Yeah, it might be something. I would never rule out an Eric Rowan signing during, down the line, but I think that's a guy that kind of needs to maybe take a bit of time out, find out what he's what his gimmick is, maybe establish himself in Indies. I don't know. I don't know enough about the guy's history. Maybe he's already done that. But for well, me, here's I the don't thing. Know you know, place at the minute from he's had. I've I've kind of like, as always. I, I'm always soaking up uh, wrestling insider knowledge. He actually had some really good ideas for. Do you remember when he was carrying about the wee cage? Yeah, <laughs> with the with the mystery cage, it turned out to be something absolutely a fake ridiculous. spider. That is right? absolutely Vince McMahon, and it's a fake spider. No! God oh, damn it, oh, good oh. shit! <laughs> <laughs> but did, here's the thing, though. Do you know what his what he pitched? 
because they 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 essentially handed them a cage without knowing what was going to happen with. It. It of course you did, right? <laughs> Horn so you, in the cage. <laughs> do you know what he pitched? Uh, no, I didn't. Right? Know. Have you seen American Horror Story? I have seen a couple of seasons of that. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know Piper? The wee, the wee uh, woman with the teeth. What season is this from? Because they're all different. She's done games. quite a few seasons. Series, series. Oh Think wait, are you talking about the one that's kind of got a, sh- a very strange, unfortunate look to her? Yes. Um, with the big teeth and yep. a quite prominent looking woman. So he yeah. wanted to, WWE to hire her, right? And she was going to be in the wee cage. And the reason he keeps her in the cage is not because she's a freak, right? But because the world is too horrible for her. He's protecting her. She's too pure for the world. The world's a freak, right? How cool would that have been to have her as his we Like, he's her protector. Like, can you imagine, like, here's something for you. Remember when Festus used to come out to the ring and the bell would ring and he'd, he'd turn into something oh, else? Oh, man. Aye, the bell rings and he turns... <sighs> right, but how cool would it be if that was his Achilles heel? That that's... You get Eric Rowan, but then you get Eric Rowan in beast mode trying to protect someone that Randy Orton may have just <sighs> RKO'd. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't want to sound negative, man, but... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it sounds like shit. <laughs> I honestly do, man. That's a great sounds, game, man. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's probably more inventive than a fucking fake spider. I, I'm not debating that for one minute. But I, I honestly think that if you see if you're going to book a gimmick where a guy's got something in a cage and he's hiding it, right? Because it's they're basically like it's a whole what's in the box. It's the gobbledygooker's egg again. <laughs> I mean, at least have a plan for something cool. If you're going to make yeah. something a mystery, just. I mean, I'll give credit where you credit. I mean, they've done it good in the past. I mean, uh, this is probably a recent example, but I remember that whole um, Chris Jericho return. It shouldn't have, like the whole this is going to be the end of the world as you know it. And yeah. the seg- they used to do things like that quite a lot. The segments building up something, and every week you'd be like, oh, well, then it's kind of ruined that a little bit. If I'm honest, I think but- they can still do it. Yeah. If, you know they could still do it. All you need is Vince McMahon, the guy, the guy that runs the ads on the thingy. You know, if you can put at least a, a room of five people, right, and it gets out, fire four of them. <laughs> do you know well, what I mean? Aye, exactly. I mean, to be fair to you, a, 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 a fake spider or what's Eric Rowan got in his cage? Oh, he's got that woman for America Horror Story. <laughs> <laughs> you put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but see, the fact is, like, if you say that to a non horror fan, like, oh, so what's he got in his cage? Have you ever seen American Horror Story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, you see season season two, the one when they're in that big that big loony asylum. You see the woman that looks a bit freaky and scary. She looks like the, she looks like uh, Bruno in the original Witches movie when he's halfway through turning into a mouse. <laughs> Let me think about this, right? Was she going to be a tiny little person inside the cage? Was it going to be like she's no life size because he's carrying this shit about? Can he be a life size person? Is it gonna be like she's a little... tiny? She is tiny. She can't fit in a fucking cage that size, though, surely. <laughs> Probably. You know, they'd you know gimmick what? it up. They'd gimmick See, it up. if she was that small and she fit in that cage, you've just turned it. I'm in for it because that would be weird. <laughs> exactly. Put her in the ring with Kevin Nash. Let's just see what happens. Do you know the thing is, though, all I'll say on it, right, um, is the, the reason for me bringing that up was the guy's full of ideas. <laughs> Right. <laughs> the guy's full of ideas. <laughs> Can you imagine just a hand punch to Vince McMahon, right? So, so Eric, what are we going to put in your cage? Well, Vince, I was thinking about a little person inside that cage. <laughs> a midget? Oh, uh, oh, well, 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 what type of little person? Well, Vince, have you ever seen American Horror <laughs> <laughs> Which he hasn't. <laughs> Vince has not fucking been seen either. No, he's seen Breaking Bad, that's about it. <laughs> he has, he watches Breaking Bad. Good shit, pal! Fucking book of water white. Man, exactly. I'm surprised if he's watched that, I'm surprised he's not booked a water white. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give it, give it time. But hey, uh, so that oh, took man. a. <laughs> that took a... Sort of track with that. No, but hey, that's what this is all about. This is you and I having a wrestling chat, which we do every week anyway. Um... <laughs> hey, Vince, you seen El Camino yet? <laughs> <laughs> 
good. Check it out. <laughs> head breaking bad. That's hilarious. Um, so hi. So <laughs> it would be cool to see um, Eric Rowan in AEW at some point. I imagine that conversation's happened. You know, when oh. the time's right. You know, let me know anything you need because it seems that Tony Khan is a bit of a. Uh, he is a guy that looks out for people, and he's got people. People. You know that key word. They're not wrestlers. They're not employees. They're people, and he kind of views. Yeah. The, I mean, the, it, them as people as you it, should it was really good to see the segments I really like Chris Jericho's one I really like what he said he goes don't worry man we'll take care of them for you and I was like oh, that's good that's genuine that's you know tributes to the man aside making his son sign the son to a contract con- I think maybe that's that makes no that's fucking sense I'm sorry sign but... the son to a contract I don't think it's so much of we're going to make him a wrestler as it is probably the man had probably Brody Lee had probably had a contract signed maybe for that length of time i don't know i think maybe they're just using that as a way so they can, can keep the wages or contributions coming to them in a legal sense which, just which is admi- which is admirable by the way but see yeah. if it's you know you've got you've just signed a contract to come and work here and come on oh no i i, I, don't, I don't believe that for one minute especially with industry as i don't think that's short-sighted maybe 20 years time we will see a young Brody lee jr but i don't i don't get the feeling that's the case yeah i think this is purely a um a way so that money's still going to his family um, which which is which is really nice you yeah know, yeah yeah i think so and um, the testimonials <laughs> on the show were really nice as well i thought there would have been more um but the ones they did have were really quite touching john yeah. actually opened the show talking about, you know, the kind of guy that he is, which is, is pretty awesome. Um, and you had Chris Jericho talking about, you know, yeah. his relationship with Brody. Um, WWE have also just released a couple of their superstars talking about Brody Lee. Yeah, Xavier Brody. Woods was really cut up about it, man. Yeah, they spent a lot of time together, apparently, which is it's kind of, it sucks, but such is life, isn't it? Um, yeah. The TNT title... So they've now retired the TNT title as it is, but they're going to, and this is this was reported on the after show where Tony Khan, Khan had said the TNT title as it is is now retired, but the TNT championship will continue, uh, but they'll create a new title for it. Um, really? <laughs> uh, I, 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 to be fair, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a nice gesture. The TNT title, let's be honest, it wasn't a, it wasn't getting over prestigiously because it was kind of getting packed about like a hot potato, in my opinion. I know Cody tried to legitimise it. By um, what? We're going here. Hold on, hold this for a minute. I'm away for two weeks. Right, I'm back. Ta. It basically, it basically copied John Cena's uh, open uh, US um, when John Cena was his later career and he won the US Championship and he was like, I will challenge anybody. It was like the, I'm John Cena. I'm going to put you over this week, but I'm still beating you. Championship, um, <laughs> but I'm still beating you. That, that's what Cody did. He, used yeah. to, he, he, he brought in lots of challengers. He brought in the guys like I know uh, Sonny Kiss. Um, you know, he, I think he had Jungle Boy. Did he have Jungle Boy on me? Maybe I'm wrong on that. But the one that caught my imagination was uh, you ever heard of War Horse? War Horse, War Horse, check out War Horse, man. He's like. For me, he's like he could be the ultimate warrior of this generation. It's utter hmm. batshit. Google Warhorse man, he's AW Illuminati. But um I it was basically the challenge Cody week. No, nope. and it was a bit like we know nobody's gonna beat you, Cody. But then Brody Lee actually I mean, people might say, Oh, Cody was you know the greatest TNT champion ever because he held it longest. I, there was even a little comment in the promo which we're not going too much, but kind of suggested that. <laughs> but, uh, even at the even at this time, you know what I mean? But um the way that Brody Lee actually won it was actually quite shocking because I didn't expect it. I don't think anybody else expected it. It was pure dominance and mm-hmm. they beat him down and Cody was gone for a little bit. It was, it was, as you say, two weeks. It should have been like five months, but instead it was just two weeks. He came back, dyed his hair black for one week and then dyed it back blonde again. Typical peak Cody. But um, mm. yeah, um, you know, it's, it's a nice gesture. Um uh, the, uh, the shot, the, the trolley collector's now holding a title that we don't know what it's going to be. Maybe him uh-huh. and his mentor, because that was one thing that was revealed in the show. That was the one storyline I feel that was furthered on, is that it's quite clear that Sting and um, the trolley collector are going to now be um, a duo um, after having their little meeting in the cupboard. <laughs> yeah. They came from out the show, because Darby oh, yeah. Allen came out the cupboard. 
<laughs> and I, I the cupboard. But then Sting came out two minutes later and I was like, was Sting in the cupboard as well? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you was like, ah, can you do a kickflip on that skateboard? Pass it. <laughs> what, what, what were they doing before they came out? You know? Learning skateboard tricks. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's quite clear that Darby Allen is going to be mentored. He's, Sting's going to do the Art Anderson role for her. Person. You know what? I'd much rather, yeah. I would much rather Sting mentored Darby Allen than came up against him. Because well, Darby Allen's not a threat to anyone, let alone Sting. No. No, he's, he's there to... What I will give AW credit for is they let, they obviously built up Darby Allen. They're quite proud of him, how they built him up, but they realise that he's still got more credibility to build. Putting him with Sting is going to do that. But if you're going to do that, pick it long term, make a relationship between the two, uh, leading towards the inevitable master versus learner showdown. And if you book it correctly and book it long enough that people care... It will be a main event that will, yeah, that should be a big money draw for the AEW. That would be um, cool. And Sting only needs to wrestle once. Sting, Sting should, uh, Sting should be booked. I think he will wrestle again, um, but he needs to be booked as he's been booked right now. He is an attraction, um, like like your like Undertaker was at WWE. He should be booked that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and personally, I, as much as I love a Sting promo, I think he needs to keep this closed because yeah. the, the image and the vis- visual look of sting is so much more impactful than when he starts opening his mouth and hey talking. tony man it, do you know what i mean it just <laughs> takes away a lot. i know that's sting that's sting from like t like wcw sting and that's that's what's made him successful but i'm telling you man see that that cruel character it's 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 still got legs man that's that stuff still in, i totally agree i totally agree i think it's still agree. legit <clears throat> thing there is, is beautiful as well. Do you know who I'd love to see debut in uh, AEW? Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, right? And here's the thing. Hear oh me my out on God. This. Hear me out on this, right? He doesn't need to go there and wrestle every week. He, like Taz, could have his own little faction, right? Where he's the mouthpiece, right? Because yeah, it's going to go one <laughs> or two ways. It's going to go <laughs> one or two ways. It's either going to go this way, which is... He's badass and everything he's got to say makes me quiver. Or it's going to go at uh, fucking what? And it's going to be a meme every single week after he does a promo. Some people might think you're crazy, but I'm telling you what, he would bring more viewers in. Whether AEW wants a guy like that around their locker room, I don't know. But um, he would draw money. He would draw money for sure. Here's the thing. Do you, know, do you know, just for you saying that, um, and Anna, by the way, I think a lot of people have a lot of positive things to say about Scott Steiner. I know he gets a bad rap, but I think the, I think maybe in his older age, he's kind of calmed down with that kind of stuff, right? Maybe. But, you know, Billy Gunn, I'm hearing a lot that Billy Gunn's now been nice to everyone. And I don't know if it's because now he feels like, you know, because he is the guy, that's, he's the Bill DeMott, right? He's the Matt Bloom now of AEW, right? And I don't know if he's maybe taking that role to like, you know, this is my fucking thing now. And he's treating people like shit, but... I've heard so many, not so many, but quite a few people talking about someone backstage who was completely rude to me and horrible, right? And then I watched the Brody Lee interview with Tony Schiavone and the female uh, referee. The, uh, I think Aubrey was, Edwards. Aubrey Edwards. I think she was <clears throat> the first female referee. That's why I referenced her as being the female referee. Yeah. The referee, right? You're right. You're right. Right. <laughs> right? I'm not trying to be like, you're the female one. Like, she's a... She's a good referee, bloody good referee. Just, I'm just trying to, I don't remember her name. So, it's, hey man, it's a fact. She is the female referee. She is a female Name referee, referee, right? A very good one. Um, exactly. <laughs> right. So, so there you go. Pride in that, right? Um, she, uh, during that interview, was like that. And they were talking about, you know, who, who don't we like? And she was like, oh, Billy Gunn. You know, fuck Billy Gunn. And I was thinking, right, I'm feeling, just picking up on vibes here that Billy Gunn's throwing his weight around. Right, which by the way, get that shit on TV, right? Put Billy Gunn next in that roster on AEW. Tell me he doesn't look like the the star of the show. I think the I think what they don't like about Billy Billy Gunn is that the fact that he's a guy from a period of WWE where he was he was mid card man. He was don't get me wrong, he was part of. He really, could have gone higher, I think. He could. Have, he, he was a guy who had plenty of potential. And to be fair, maybe people say he didn't match that potential. I mean, he was one of the 
he was one half of one of the, the most popular tag teams in WWE history. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to underplay that, but he's wrestled a couple of times for AEW. But the problem is, whatever he has, he's just towering over these <laughs> these little guys. He looks like <laughs> a legit fucking star. I know, but the thing is, he is a guy who is I don't know maybe fifties who. You know, I, I I can understand where you're coming from, but I think that's maybe the concern they've got. And as for him being a, if he if he's the one being a dick backstage, I can't say I'm surprised, but I think it falls into, you know, it's a hard business and there's lots of characters. And, <laughs> you know, it's you've been in wrestling, right? I I I would say I've been in wrestling, but I was yeah. in there for two weeks before I was like, get this the fuck. <laughs> you know, right? That this is not a an industry, a business where you can be a, a wet wipe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know the problem with the day and age nowadays, in my opinion, is that um, society kind of built, makes wet wipes at a dramatic rate. I think Ooh. people are very easily offended. And I think in the, the wrestling industry, what's it going to take to offend you? Yeah. Uh, very little. Uh, <laughs> well, here's the thing, mate. I'm still stand by it, right? You take that roster and you match them up to Billy Gunn, they'll look like children. Most mm. of them look like children. Yeah. So why would you not use Billy Gunn as your champ? He he could legitimately be AEW champion and one that doesn't get beat very often. This is the problem. People are going to sit there and say, fucking Billy Gunn's AEW champion. What was he in WWE? He was that fucking guy that was the New Age Outlaws that fucking hangs about with DX. People, that, that, Perceptions are there to be changed, mate. I'm telling you, he could I, do I, it. I get you. I get you. And I think there's a lot of people who are mine and your age that would really pop for it, but... For that reason, I honestly think AW won't do it as much as I. Don't get me wrong. See if they did that tomorrow, I'd be like, "This is pretty fucking different and cool and fucking awesome." Right? It, 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 you know what? It would be, but it's not going to happen, is it? It's, it's not. Unfortunately, it should. It would be pretty cool. Um, so Billy no, Gunn, if you want to come on our show, we've got your back, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't be mean <laughs> to us. You can come on us and be mean as you like to us. I won't give a shit, man. You know why? <laughs> because I can take it. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, did you have any other thoughts on AEW this this week? Um, really, I mean, I mentioned about how, like, in tribute, they represented the WWE superstars. AEW wasn't, you know, they were like, you know, what he had his friends and he had his time in WWE. He's got a lot of people who he worked with there. He would have been friends with, respected. And they acknowledged that, and that was good, and that was fine. As I say, difficult week to critique. The only storyline that Wheels really moved on was, as I say, a Sting in the trolley collector. Um, <laughs> I'm, I've not mentioned his name once. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but um, I'll still find it funny. But yeah, <laughs> diff- difficult week to critique. Um, we'll be back on course next week um, with the storylines and where the hell we're going. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we we ha- we didn't even have AEW's champion wasn't really featured in a show outside of the opening 10 bell. No, what, exactly. What does that, what does that say? So. Mm, yeah, well, we'll kind but, of see where it goes. But yeah, again, you know, fitting... Did a good job. Well done, AEW. But let's, exactly. let's, we've said our we've said our thing, and unfortunately, it's time to move on. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> kudos to to such a, a touching tribute to a good man. That Absolutely, they've been. You know. So yeah. So we then move on to the first show of this year, the first wrestling show, which is SmackDown on the first of the first twenty one. So that was. Yesterday, as of our time of recording this, um, I'm just going to open up with Roman Reigns' promo, which opened oh, the show. Mate, mate, can I just Killing say, it. he has now, now he has such a presence that when he walks into a building, he, you're like, right, there's the rock. That He has a presence now that he never had before. He has a confidence now that he never had before. He has turned the haters... Um, He's he's done. He, he's winning the battle now, man. He's make WWE right. To be fair to WWE, they've always seen potential in this guy, and they've wanted to book him to the moon. But that's where they've been the failure. This guy should have been booked to the moon, but not as a baby face. He should be booked to the moon, doing what he's doing right now. Mm-hmm. As soon as the shield, he should have been the one to end the shield. He should have been the one that continue like he is right now. Well, um, look at it. Do you remember when the shield first came in <clears throat> to WWE, right? We were all like, well, who, who's this big, big Roman, right? They were heels. We liked them because they were heels. Correct. We liked Roman because we're like, he's badass, he's heel, right? And then I think, and, and no, one kinda put, no one kinda puts any em- emphasis on this, but I think CM Punk had a big part oh, yeah. in making 
Roman Reigns disliked on his mm. podcast with Colt Cabana. Oh, yeah, like make Roman, make Roman look strong. That yeah. straight away, that <clears throat> was the start of, oh, well, the, you know, the office want Roman, right? And that automatically turned everybody against the against the grain where it comes to Roman Reigns, and no one kind of no one kind of pivots that as here's where it changed, because it did. It yeah, I mean, you, you, I think you've got a big point. I think that was that was a time where um, us versus them. Yeah, yeah, Punk certainly did fuel that that whole ideology of fans thinking WWE's out of touch for mm-hmm. sure. And then of course you had Ambrose. John Moxley kind of added to that as well. And he, of course, he was in the shield. But um, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it was just we didn't want another John Cena. Um, yeah. John Cena, I mean, I, I I will go and I'll put my arm out and say John Cena is one of the most undervalued wrestlers by wrestling fans mm-hmm. probably of the last two decades or something like that. I mean, that guy has had more five-star matches in The Rock, but nevertheless was less popular than him at his peak, which was, yeah. says crazy, but it's just the way he was booked. It's the way he was booked, it's the way his character was built. Um, thank God that Roman stuck to his guns, managed to... Because I, I honestly feel that he's got this heel turn because he's pushed for it. He took a bit of time after his leukaemia battle, which, you know something in itself kind of speaks to the man himself mm-hmm. um but he's came back and man he's he said you know what let me fucking prove it to you that i can get myself over as a heel i mean i think i think it's just the way wrestling goes see all all good great wrestlers get themselves over first of all as heels mm-hmm. and once they've done that then they can become the baby face and they're easily accepted as that Mm-hmm. You can name just about every great wrestler. The one that automatically comes to my mind is Triple H. Triple H, we'll, you know, we'll speak about him in next week's show. Mm-hmm. But um, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, um, Ric Flair, Jericho, Rand, Randy Orton, Jericho. Um, they all started out. That's, that's just a small. There's just about every great wrestler you can think of. Name them. They started off as a heel. Um, I cannot think of one who was a, maybe. Hulk Hogan was a baby face at the gate, but I don't think he was. I think he was maybe a heel as well before his WWE run. But I can't think of many. But even then, he turned heel in WCW as well. Had that other. I don't think Hogan did actually ever have a heel run, even back in like when he was back in the territories. Maybe he's one. He he's maybe one of the exceptions, but because um, Hulk Hogan is kind of his own kind of his own brand. Cena, of Cena was a heel, by the way. He got over as a heel. He did. He did. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, fucking Lesnar. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle yep. was a different type of heel. But, oh, he was a brilliant um, heel. Many will argue, that, myself included, that Kurt Angle's best years was when he was 2004, 2005, when he was that super mega bald ankle looking bastard mm-hmm. of a heel. Edge. Um, mm-hmm. There you go. Um, Undertaker, was he a heel? Undertaker was just Of course he was Undertaker. a heel. Of course he was a heel. Was it, I don't know. He's always kind of been his own. Mate, thing, isn't he? the Ministry like, uh, were a heel fucking faction, mate. <laughs> but he had Stephanie he... McMahon fucking hoisted <laughs> up above the Titan Tron because he's a heel. <laughs> Undertaker's always kind of been a heel. He's he's the definition of a tweener, isn't he? Yeah, he, heelish things, but always loved. Anyway, yeah, yeah. what I was saying is Roman's going through his period where he's his heel. He's probably going to be one of the exceptions. He started as a face. Couldn't get the rock started off as a face, couldn't fucking get anything. Turned heel with the nation of domination, the rest is history. Roman's going to do the same. Roman's going to be a Hall of Famer, for Mate, sure. Do you know Vince McMahon has always said he'll get over, right? He, he will get over. Yeah. And again, it does, it does speak to the genius that Vince is. I know everybody likes to call him out of touch and stuff, but let's just let's just take a moment to realize and to, to appreciate that wrestling wouldn't be what it is today without Vince McMahon. He is the yes. the greatest person character. He's the reason we're here. Right? Exactly. Right. So there ain't no bigger bigger dog in the yard than uh, Vince McMahon. But just to kind of touch on Roman Reigns, his promo, now that he, f- rather than, and I don't know how much is spoon fed to him, but it feels organic now, feels natural. Not not like a, a, a suffering thicka thicka tash, son, <laughs> right? And, and there's nothing in it that feels like it's come off a script. Maybe that's just how well he's doing it now, based on what he's been given. Or maybe they're giving him bullet points and letting him hit the home runs himself. But yeah. whatever they're putting in the water, the water that is being fed to Roman Reigns, <laughs> fucking keep doing it, mate. Because I'm like, <laughs> I want to see this shit. 
you got range of water there. <laughs> you make sure you put that shit in it, right? We need them good for Friday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the way from Stanford. I think uh, Roman Reigns is <laughs> Roman, <laughs> Roman Reigns, like, you got my water, boy. <laughs> exactly. Got I my think, shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I think, I genuinely think that is the best work so far that he's done in his career. And not only that, but the people around him. He's elevating people, right? Jay yes. Uso, not only just Jay Uso, but look at what him and Kevin Owens are doing right now. Kevin Owens hasn't really been featured that well in the last year and a half, right? Uh, He's kind of just been bobbing, right? But we're seeing the best of him now, again, that he's, he's hooked up with Roman Reigns. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good person to book him against. Kevin Owens has been a guy who uh, I've always liked. I think I like him. as He's a genuinely good human being and a mm-hmm. good wrestler who's done well to to get where he has, but he's always had that feel for me of like management don't see you as a top guy, mate. So yeah. um, he's been booked against the top guy right now, but I cannot help. But he's just getting to get fed. Um, yeah. Da- Daniel, is. yeah, that da- for me, Daniel Bryan tapped out Nak- Nak- Nakamura on the same episode of SmackDown. Daniel Bryan's a guy that's going to go up against Reigns, but at the minute, I think I mentioned this last week, I can't see anybody getting near him, and I- I'm sitting here scratching my head. And outside, he mentioned Drew last week. I'm like, I honestly don't see anybody who's going to dethrone him at the minute unless they're planning to bring back Brock Lesnar. But that Mate, I was just going to say, that. can you imagine them just feeding him to Brock? What? And then having him in the chase? What Ugh. would it do, though? And you know, Brock would, would have to be face, right? He wouldn't be, though, would he? He would be... It's too soon for Brock. If he came back now, he'd be booed at the building for that. I, I, mean, think, I think The Rock... It's is where it's at. But you know what? How cool would this be? Right? I'm just going to put this out here, right? How cool would it be if The Rock comes back and is like, you think you're the head of the table? I built the table, right? Oh, it's yeah, my, it's, ta- obvious, it's obvious, my table obvious. that you're keeping warm, right? Oh. While I went off to Hollywood. But you know what? I'm back to show you that I'm the, I'm the head of the table. And hey, it gets to WrestleMania. The, the the table. Right? <laughs> right? It gets to WrestleMania and Reigns absolutely fucking pummels The Rock. Should yes! Be. Oh, Should and I mean... Pommel's the rock. Oh my god, that would be fucking awesome, right? Uh, with Hammers them. Don't get me wrong, I'm with you. I like the rock, but um, yeah, if, if they're gonna book the rock against Reigns, that's mm-hmm. not the Cena thing. Reigns needs to beat him first. Reigns, Reigns doesn't need to just beat him, he needs to fuck him up. How about he fucks him up and then makes him join his tribe? <laughs> that's there's, never a whole, there's, there's a whole call me chief. <laughs> call stuff. me chief. That's, that's, hey man, could you imagine that WrestleMania? Yeah. Like, hopefully, it's in front of an audience and you've got Raymond Reigns going, going wrong. Raymond Reigns. <laughs> I didn't say Raymond. Reigns, she said Raymond. Oh. Twenty forty to Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> There's one with no head for a while. <laughs> Just body to do it, man. There's a wee Phoenix Knight uh, oh, Max and Paddy's Road to Nowhere. <laughs> Check that out on uh, all streaming services. <laughs> Raymond Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> the bastard. <laughs> Raymond the bastard. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, for, for all you wrestling fans that That's don't know. That's been a long time since I've heard that. <laughs> Just when you said it. Then. Raymond the bastard. <laughs> so, uh, Raymond Reigns. I think I think oh, I, I think the Rock couldn't acknowledge him as the head of the table, but I think it would be a case where Rock gets so demolished at, at WrestleMania that you just he just disappears after afterwards, just doesn't come back till maybe yeah. till maybe SummerSlam, right, and gets you know a bit more offense this time. But I think Reigns needs to Still stay loses. strong. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then somebody somebody will pop their head at the parapet. And then say, right, I'm the guy. Take maybe like an uh, an, an almost almost sort of Keith Lee. I I don't know. Neither. I don't, not even in the same league. Not in the minute. Even in not the even same. close. I don't who, see it. Who knows? Yeah. It, they need somebody. Somebody will have to. If they need to book him. Somebody will defer him one day. But it needs to be the right person. But knowing WWE, they will fuck it up and probably feed him the Goldberg. Another That's thing I was I was kind honest. of touching upon while I'm watching. Jey Uso really has upped his game. We've seen how incredibly talented he is. And hey, man, see that, the way he sold that way when he was handcuffed to those ropes. Yeah. I was like, my God, he's selling that like a motorful. Yeah. Right, like, and not only that, like we're 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 seeing spotlight, and that's again what I said. Roman Reigns is elevating everybody around him. Yeah, and I think see with uh, with Jey Uso, I'd like to see him have an intercontinental title run. run. Yeah, I mean, he, he could certainly do it. I mean, we used to, we used to joke about the Usos back in the day, and. 
you know. Usos. Usos. <laughs> People are wondering what the hell we're talking about, but yeah, we used to joke about them quite a lot, and um, yeah, he's elevating it. He's doing well for himself. Credit to Jay Uso. I mean, that match that he had with Roman kind of was the making of him, and it's continued ever since. Mm-hmm. But um, we shall, we shall. As I say, I, I've not watched a lot of SmackDown. I will watch a certainly a lot more. Roman will certainly uh, keep me coming to that. He is. Let's be honest. No offense to anybody else in SmackDown, he is the reason people are watching SmackDown at the minute. Oh, unbelievable! Um, for me, Randy Orton is the reason to watch Raw at the moment. Those are the two MVPs currently. Um, but and Drew, I'm going to say Drew. Oh well, yeah, Drew as well, Drew. But um, as just yeah, needs think... to turn the game up and stop being yeah. I, I don't I think that's my way up here. No, no, yeah. but I think. I think, do you know, I think Drew's at the point now where he knows when it's time to turn it up. He knows when it's time Absolutely. to Absolutely. Make... Yeah. I mean, I mentioned this last week, but if you've not watched his Broken Skull interview with Stone Cold Steve Austin, go and watch it. It's awesome. It's one of the best interviews I've done so far mm-hmm. um, outside the Undertaker ones for me. But um, anyway. Other, yeah. other news on Raw, actually. Um, there's been two oh. new theme songs, by the way, right? And I was like, all right, cool. So the first one, before I get to the next one, first one is Big E has a new theme song. Same gimmick. I think that's the right call. Same gimmick, new theme song. I think what he's going to do is take what he's done with the with the the new day and just turn it up a bit because he he kind of sits there with his legs and the splits and the ropes waiting. Yeah. I think that's probably they, they can make a John Cena out of Big E. Yeah, it's what's got him over so far. Mm-hmm. So why you know don't right. fix because what's not broken? The obvious choice would be right. Okay, right. You know, you know, you're here over, over here on SmackDown now. You're not with the guys, uh, so we're just going to have you run a bit on mean, like before. Slap your tits, pad up your hands, and start <laughs> running through people, right? <laughs> slap your tits, <laughs> slap them titties, right? Um, which, by the way, it's not that it didn't work, but we know where Biggie is. We know who Biggie yeah. is. Yeah, I think. Personally. I think if they just turn up uh, New Day, Biggie all the way, they've got the new theme song. They've got them the run with the title. The title, I think, good, good. Thumbs up, right? Yeah. I read on social media before I watched SmackDown. Oh, Natalia has a new entrance theme, which had me thinking, wow. So if they've done that, what if we've seen Natalia, but not as Natalia Hart? What if we've seen Natalia as something else? How interesting would that be? And how, how, because she's kind of been there most of her career. She came in quite strong, won, won, you know, the, the Divas title. Right, the woman revolution happened without her. She was there, but it happened without her. Right, she oh. should have been in the heart of that. No pun intended. Right, she should have been because she was probably the best female worker they've had in a long time. So she's kind of been like a a placeholder. She keeps the the heating on in WWE in the women's division when really she shouldn't have. I think she should have been. More, she should be more celebrated for this for the work she's done because she came in at a time where it was all bimbos that couldn't work. No offense. Yeah, right? no, no, she's she's definitely had longevity. And right. Regarding her theme tune, does it still have the Brett the heart um, opening? Well, here's the thing, right? If they've dropped that, I've actually got more credit for her. Well, here's honest. the thing. So, I <clears throat> I was like, all right, I'm looking forward to her match now to see the new entrance to see if there's a new Natalia because I think it's stale as shit. The whole heart thing. It's stale as shit. We get right? it. We know you're a heart. Right, you're a heart. That's it. So I thought, right, it would be cool to have her go off on her own now. And just even call her Natalia. F- drop the heart stuff, right? Do something different. Have us all be like, wait a fucking minute. Where did you come in? You know what I mean? That would be awesome, right? You want? I will, I will now hum her new song. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, it's slightly heavier. Exact same fucking song slightly heavier to the point you have to go have they changed the theme music oh they have it's almost like the pan mute in the guitar now you, uh, you know, right you know what the biggest problem with that is and it always has been oh. see if i was at a show right and i heard that my first thought is oh my god it's fucking bret hart here and then natalia comes out and you're like oh, oh. it's just, it's just <laughs> natalia <laughs> now whether natalia is good or not that's going to be your first reaction. Whenever I hear it, I mean, I heard that uh, um, I watched a SmackDown a few months ago, and I, I, I SmackDown or Raw, whatever it was, it came on, and I went, oh, it's a bit of her showing up, and then it was, no, it's no, it's Natalia, and I was like, ah. I was I mean, WrestleMania, not... it was WrestleMania that happened, and I was like, oh, right, okay, it's just Natalia. She's <laughs> technically not even a real heart, though, is she? Well, she's Jim the, Jim the Anvil Neidhart's daughter. Who wasn't really a heart? No, he was a heart <laughs> by association. Right, <laughs> so 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So yeah. come on, come on. Like fair, fair play to her. She's a good worker. And she's and she's incredible, and I think you know, I think brace your legacy in that. But I think it's a shame. I think there's more to her, and she could really like because when anybody you know when she eventually goes in the Hall of Fame ten years from now, right? People are gonna be like, oh yeah, she was reliable. That that's her legacy. She was reliable. She helped yeah. get other people over. She was a, a locker room leader. Where's the oh that feud was fucking class though, right? We don't have any of that. And I think I think I think she deserves that. I think she's more than capable of that. So aye, right. And and just kind of my final note that I took on SmackDown, because there wasn't a lot that really had me going, right? (laughs) But I thought, right, so Dolph Ziggler now is doing his whole heel gimmick with a Oh God, aye. With Bobby uh, Reed, which I'm like now see when I say it right, I'm just gonna just 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 to kind of prove my point. Todd, Dolph Ziggler. I know. I wrote actually, I've literally wrote here. Dolph Ziggler is still a thing. Question. Dolph mark. Ziggler, right? Now here's 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 what had me thinking. How cool would it be, right? If what something happens, maybe nothing happens. Dolph Ziggler just disappears. Give him a year off. Work behind the scenes. Train people, right? Rebrand them. Have him come back in denims. Grow. Let his hair dye his hair black. Have a beard, and come back with a chip on your shoulder fucking leave the do you know what it is he's the guy in school that that's the teacher's pet that sits up great that does everything perfect yeah right and people didn't like him right he's that and i think see if we could just tap into some real aggression let him take his frustrations because i think kevin owens said it last week on smackdown you know you were kind of the guy or it wasn't last week it was a while ago. you were kind of the guy you should have had your chance had your chance but not really mm-hmm let That's that, exactly what he is. Let let that be <clears throat> the thing that inspires him. Again, nothing nothing to do with him. It's not his fault. He's dealt a hand. He's he's Natalia. He's the male Natalia. He's right? better. He's better than that. No <laughs> right. to Natalia. He's he's, be, he's better than that. He had so much potential. Man still has, but I honestly, it's I I just can't see it happening. You see him, he's basically the Barry Horowitz of 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 this generation. Uh, he's he's better than that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you get what I'm saying, right? You see I get, him come, I, and you're like, I he's not going to win. There was a time when he was over. There was a time where they could have made him a credible champion. He would have been... It, the problem was he was kind of had this whole, he's an ex-Shawn Michaels thing in him, and nobody's going to be the next Shawn Michaels. Um he could, I, I see where they're going with that comparison, and it was quite a relevant comparison to make, I suppose. But more Kurt Hennig, Mister. Ah, yes, yeah, it could be a really good comparison, but you know, it just never had that. What I mean by the, the Shawn Michaels comparison is that Shawn Michaels wasn't a big guy, but he fought against the big guys and was credible. He always kind of came out going, "Well, maybe he could beat him," because he was always kind of about. Edge was quite some, the same as well. It was like mm-hmm. this guy might not have the brash, but he's always got a bit of the, the you know, the brains about him. To that, that's what Dolph Ziggler should have been. They never mm-hmm. quite got that, and he's still doing the same shit he was doing five or six years ago. Or oh, let's put him with a Bobby Bobby Roode's another one. That, like really should have been booked differently. But uh, as I say, I wrote, is it still a thing? What's the point? <sighs> not interested. Mm-hmm. You're right, re- re- rebranding might help him. I don't know, but it's I can't see it. Perceptions can be changed, right? We've seen it. Husky Harris, right? Perceptions can be changed when you take something away and bring it back. Roman Reigns, Husky Harris. Even even Bo Dallas could be really, really something. Here's a theory, though, right? Do you remember, you going back to that, that you mentioned CM Punk's interview earlier on, there was a line when he said, there's a lot of guys in the back who are quite happy to get paid who would be delighted if they weren't on the match card tonight. Mm-hmm. And the first person I always thought of when he said that was Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. I don't know Dolph Ziggler personally, but he hits me as that type of guy. It's like, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy doing this this mm-hmm. role here. I don't get big matches. I don't wrestle a lot, but I'm getting paid a lot of shitload of money. And if that's the way he feels, then fair mm-hmm. enough. But I can't help but feel that he's in somebody's spot who might be able to make something more of it. But, Which is a shame. I just think... Yeah. But Dolph Ziggler, again, missed opportunity. The guy's, he's something else. He's something else, but that's that's just the way of it. What, what do you have, what other notes do you have on SmackDown? I I just wrote Brian Taps Nakamura. I was kind of thinking he's kind of 
going to be the next one, at least to give Reigns something to think about, but nothing more than that. Corbin and Zayn are two people that I just do not give a fuck about. I'm still, I'm still, for people who are watching this, I'm still extremely bitter that Corbin <laughs> beat yeah, Kurt cool. Angle at yeah. WrestleMania. Like, that WrestleMania pissed me off to no end. One, because the Undertaker didn't fucking show up. <laughs> it showed you in the last Friday, it was backstage, and even Undertaker himself was going, Todd's going to be really fucking disappointed that I didn't show up. <laughs> And I was watching the Last Ride documentary going, you're right, fucking Undertaker. I was fucking gutted you didn't show up. This show needed you, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, John Cena was at the fucking show. Just have John Cena retire Kurt Angle. It was fucking simple. Oh, no. But no, you had to fucking go and take your King Corbin and make him the most fucking... Like, look, almost two years later, I still fucking hate the film. <laughs> so uh, do you know what? I think it was the perfect booking then, just for that response. Ah, fuck yeah. him, this, this, is, this is not like he's oh oh he's, he's really got heat at you oh he's really good heel he did fuck all of it it was the way it was booked got total X pack go away heat and see if you're watching King Corbin fuck you ah <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> do you know I think I, I preferred Baron Corbin with his long receding hairdo I preferred that oh yeah uh, absolutely all I needed was a baseball bat with nails on his shoulder. That's all I needed. And I thought yeah. it was quite credible, but then he started to talk and he got, you know, the suit and I thought, uh... Even Kurt Angle and his broken skull sessions, right? He's too nice to say it, but even yeah. Kurt Angle was like, that was fucking shit. I'm so happy about it. <laughs> exactly. Goldberg got a couple title runs and smashed Brock Lesnar. What did I get? Corbin. <laughs> Aye. And Betty Vince the whole time was sitting there going, <laughs> I think you could go to T and Angle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what that was. I bet you. That's accuracy to that. Oh, I forget, but I don't forget. <laughs> exactly. Good shit. I'll, I'll give you a job, but you son of a bitch is working for me now. <laughs> it would have been better fan service because look how good that Ronda Rousey match was with the tag match Triple H. <sighs> Stephanie, it would have been oh, better fan no. service to... Even his return, man. Why did they fucking announce I it? I know. See if they just had Kurt Angle show up out of nowhere. The whole Kurt and his black son. And, oh. <laughs> his black son. <laughs> it's still doing that shit. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Jason Jordan's son. <laughs> and did you see that picture of Booker T's wife with Kurt Angle? <laughs> We should do a whole episode on Kurt Angle's return run, just berating every the whole. Remember the thing when he, he came out and wrestled in a, a gold gimp suit as well. It was like El Conquistador. Yeah. And it took, it took, it took the hit. If I go off, I'm like, well, of course it was Kurt Angle. It was a guy in a gold suit that wrestled exactly like fucking Kurt Angle does. Uh, El Conquistador. Oh, Kurt Angle, I love you, but you were so mistreated, and you know what. He was, he was, unfortunately. But hey, you know, never say see, never. AW's a thing. See, when he got he got released and then we signed a WWE contract, I think they shot themselves. I think they thought <laughs> yeah. he might actually go to AW and actually show that he's still capable of being. Should have went. Aye. Kurt Angle's a guy who could go to AW and really be valuable. But in many ways, in many ways, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> anyway. Um, have you got anything else to say in SmackDown or any other re- weekly wrestling stuff before we go on to our next Bro- segment, the last segment of the show, I believe? Yeah, this. let's let's move this to the to the segment. This is one I've had no control over. I know oh, no nothing, so I'll let you take that away, Todd. I, I I'll give a bit of background as to why I wanted this segment in the show. We didn't do it last week. This is the first edition, and I like it to be an ongoing segment because, um, as I mentioned last week, um, I got into this. I, I knew of wrestling. Um, I knew what it was. I knew some of the characters. I enjoyed it. But I didn't know wrestling to the depths of what Kevin knew wrestling. And when when I first met Kevin, we were, we were much younger, about 13, 14. Kev, we used to talk about wrestling, it was one of our common interests. But Kevin knew a lot more than me. And he would tell, tell me stuff that I didn't know and stuff that sounded absolutely fascinating to myself. Now, <laughs> we live in a world where the internet's kind of exposed just about every aspect of wrestling. But back in, you know, 2003, 2004, the internet was a thing, but it was certainly not something I was well up in myself with wrestling. So Kevin would tell me about these characters and I'd go, surely that wasn't fucking real. That couldn't have worked. And that's, that sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> um, but then I'd go home, find out about it. And I would just keep going d- deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. We've seen it with J-Mac on the other. Yeah. So we, me and Kevin talk about wrestling stuff that's fairly common knowledge to him, but to an outsider who doesn't know anything about wrestling, they'll listen to it and go, 
wait a fucking minute, I know of Stone Cold, The Rock, John Cena, etc., but I don't know about these odd little bits and pieces that you're talking about that sound yeah. more interesting than the actual the big stuff itself. Uh-huh. So I decided to set myself, um, or set Kevin a challenge of bringing up um, an obscure or lesser known wrestler uh, from Kevin's time growing up. To put it further back would be unfair. It needs to be from Kevin's period of watching wrestling from up from his younger days up till now. Um, and see if he can fill me in the way he used to about these wrestlers as if I'd never heard of them before. Um, he used to go, here, mind so-and-so. And I'd go, I don't know who you're talking about. He'd go, I don't. <laughs> here, here's, this is what it was, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to call a quick segment, it's going to be called, here, mind, right? <laughs> here, mind. <laughs> and I went looking for the most obscure attitude or a wrestler I could find. And I was looking for, a, you know, a, a list, a grid of like, faces and that like you get Sean Michaels and stuff like that mm-hmm. and I seen one picture and I'd never heard of him before and it made me piss myself laughing and I'm gonna he's gonna be the first inaugural audition I'm to, nervous uh, <laughs> yes, I don't know <laughs> so you feel free to google him if it doesn't come straight to mind Kevin but here mind Goga Goga yes <laughs> Goga was in the oddities <laughs> oh right okay well that makes sense <laughs> I was looking at the uh, Attitude Era roster and I just seen this this mask and I was pissing myself laughing going, here, my Goga. Ah, <laughs> Goga, was was he not Thunder? He was Thunder. I don't, from, I don't uh, know. You tell me. Goga. I'm just, just to get, I'm just so that we, uh, I'll get you this can, up on my phone you here. You can fill me in on yep. who Goga, Goga was. was Thunder. Look. Right, so that right, that's not the picture I've seen. Show not, me the not. picture that I would have seen. <laughs> yeah, it's with a big gold mask. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like something at Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Aye, that's right. the picture I've seen. That's, I was like, what that's the... thunder, mate. That's thunder. Oh, right. So it's the same guy. Cool. Aye. Yeah, he was part of the oddities. Come on. <laughs> the oddities, right. basically, the, the oddities kind of came about when Vince was like, we've got a bunch of these dafties and we don't know what to do with them. And uh, they basically put them together. And what, what they kind of tried to do was appeal to the teenagers, you know, because all these outcasts, man. <laughs> so, so Golga was basically the heater for... Uh, <laughs> For the oddities, man. Uh, the oddities, bunch of jobbers. It's kind of a shame that that's kind of how Thunder's um, career kind of ended because he died um, maybe not so long after the oddities. Um, so I, I mean, the oddities were they used to be like Al Snow and Head and Steve Blackman versus four of the oddities, <laughs> and then they would tag in Head, which basically meant that Al Snow can use Head, right? Unless you're playing <laughs> WWF Attitude, where Head has rubber gloves for hands and wellies for feet, and it's just a head with no body. <laughs> <laughs> for those watching who don't know, head was literally a, a head. Yeah, Apollo, uh, uh, that originated in ECW. Yeah. What happened initially was, who, who's got a head? Um, was an inside joke, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what head. does everybody want? Head, right? Uh, and then people started, I think uh, he had bought a, a styrofoam head, and took it out to the ring one night, and then they start. People started bringing their own, and ECW uh, caught on. And you know, Al Snow at that point was only sent to ECW to work there because they had nothing for him on the on WWE. Al Snow still worked for WWE whilst he was at ECW. Change days, and that is when when the the Al Snow character evolved was at ECW, just like uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? Uh, and then Vince was like, wait, 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 wait a minute. And then they, they created Head, which was a mannequin doll. And when I was younger, my sister had a mannequin head doll that you could do the hair on, right? And my dad came to me, he came through, Kevin, why have you not helped me on Donna's doll? Because <laughs> I was playing, uh, <laughs> I was playing wrestling. <laughs> so I took the doll head and wrote, help me on it. <laughs> I never do that story. Yeah, my dad came through. Like, <laughs> Why did you write help me on your on your sister's doll? That will only come off. I'm like, she doesn't mind. She's not using it anyway. And I'm like, this. <laughs> Battering my bash and brawlers. Do you remember the bash and brawlers? <laughs> you still had them, man. Right? They had the Goldberg one and the uh, the Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan one. And I'd be like, this fucking <laughs> with head. So that's kind of like a wee segue from the oddities. You would see the oddities kind of just going up against a new age outlaws. Do you know what? I think it's a shame that the oddities don't get the kind of recognition that they should. Uh, Golga was really just the, didn't speak. It was the heater. It was the great Kali of the oddities. 
And to be honest, I don't think any of the oddities really had anything going for them. It was just, you know, <laughs> a bunch of bunch of dafties that would come out. Uh, one wearing a South Park t-shirt was kind of just to be hip with the kids. Uh, and I, the oddities, not, there's not really much to say on them. Just they were a good, them, they're like the Mean Street Posse. The Mean Street Posse had more going for them, really. A bit more of a, and you know, uh, Pete Gass actually had a, has a book called Looking at the Lights. I've yet to read it, but I'm going to. And it's about his time from just being Shane McMahon's friend to being like, yeah. you know, we need, cool. we need to get you in. And that would be really interesting. We should have him on, actually, to talk about that. But oh, man, spent, that'd be awesome. But he spent his career looking at the lights, basically, <laughs> flat back on the... on the, the hard work, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, that, that again, that, that's Golga. Gol- I mean, if you want to talk about Thunder... Yeah, I mean, we might as well, because, I mean, I've, I've, I brought up Golga, so we might as well. You, you've told me that Golga is Thunder, so... Thunder and talk- ty- yeah. Typhoon. Do you know, right, that Thunder, Golga, back... Uh, and, and the original days of him being Thunder, right? So he 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 and Typhoon were. What errors this? Because I mean, actually, this, this, when he was Golga. This is this is Bret Hart, uh, Hulk Hogan, say brother. Like this is know that. Yeah. about ninety two, ninety five to ninety five. Him yeah. and uh, him and Thunder, Thunder and uh, Typhoon were the uh, the name thingy. They were the <laughs> there was a name for them, and they were basically just two big big guys. And an interesting fact about Thunder is Jake Snake had a match with him, right? And he brought out a snake, and Thunder actually sat on it, jumped up and sat on it. Oh, that's who did that, right? He told me about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I know that that caused a lot of issues backstage or whatnot. But he actually jumped on Jake Snake's snake because he was petrified. He was actually in real life petrified of the snake. But I mean. As far as they were like Rosie and Jamal, right? So, right, they were like Rosie and Jamal. They're hard to beat, two big beasting guys. Um, no, as far as King Mabel, this era, but they they were they. I remember because when I was growing up watching that era of WWE, it was already gone by the time I started watching it. So these mm-hmm. things had already long happened, right? So when I was watching it, you wouldn't get weekly episodic TV. I never started watching wrestling as a weekly episodic thing. I only started doing that in the attitude era. I would watch tapes, right? Yeah. They were just tapes. And I have I, uh, them. I have an uncle who had all of them, right? Um, right? And then my mum would tape them off the TV or he would tape them for my mum. And you would trade them, wouldn't you? Right. I was a tape trader, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would watch old W. So I might watch SummerSlam 95 one week and then the other week I'll watch something for WCW. Right, it was never consistent, so I would never. I'd catch bits of storylines, but I always knew that things things wouldn't go well when you're going up against Typhoon and Thunder. There was they would go up against the guys like the Steiners and whatnot, and be you know. You're in for a, a hard shift, basically. Aye, aye, exactly. I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool to get something like that in uh, tag team division now. Don't really have any of these big monster guys as tag team. Those guys oh, in WWE, oh. what were they? The guys that came out with Paul El- Ellering. When was this? this Paul Ellering? Yeah, you know who Paul Ellering, Ellering is, yeah? No. Todd! Paul Ellering? See what I mean? Oh my God. You see what I mean? <laughs> Paul Ellering. This is, we're, we're, gonna, we're just about to have a second edition here. <laughs> Paul we're Ellering. Volta, we're going to have Paul <laughs> Ellering now. He was the guy that, he was the fucking Legion of Doom. See, I'm not, Road I know Warriors. Legion of Doom. I know who Legion of Doom and Road Warriors are, but I'm not well versed in those guys. He was their manager. He was the Paul Heyman. Right, they right well, they, they brought him back for those that tag team in NXT. What are they called? The big strap guys. They've got like body vests on, like the shield. What were they called again? This is NXT. I'm not real versed in NXT. Paul Ellering's with the company. And I think anybody, any tag team that has Paul Ellering would, would only benefit. The guy right. literally traveled the world with the Road Warriors everywhere on the territories. This guy is. And again, it's, it's so bizarre that he's not being used to the the likes of Paul Heyman, you know, and the guys like Jim Cornette, Jake Snake is right now. Paul Ehrings up there with the guys the guys that are now kind of featuring. The, everybody that's watching that doesn't know who Paul Paul Ellering is and Todd, go and research Paul Ellering. I'm gonna have to. Right, I mean the leather jacket. 
I, I'm, I'm delighted you brought that up because that kind of highlights exactly what I was hoping this segment would be. <laughs> yeah. Because that's, that's, see that conversation you've just seen, that's a real conversation between where he tells me about something I didn't know about before. Yeah. And that's how a lot of my wrestling education has came <laughs> that way. Yeah. Um, so that makes you, at least after our first inaugural edition, one and O. Oh. One and O. Oh. Usos. <laughs> 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 so we'll have to wait until next time to see if I can catch you out. But Do you I'll know be honest, be... in that performance, I probably won't. I don't know. Like I actually was sweating there, thinking, "God, what if he finds something I actually don't know?" <laughs> like because that, that exists. Sometimes I catch myself. I'm like, "Wait a minute, what?" And it's usually within a window of like two to three months that it was a thing, and it must have been when I wasn't watching. But the thing is, I, catch I, that. I would like to Google at least an image of yeah. whoever it is, and you well, probably, that's, that's it would true. trigger something up here because it's very rare that you is not something you know of. <laughs> well, Golga's um, certainly up there. That Golga, game. right? Well, <laughs> as I say, I just seen the picture last week, and I was like, I've got to bring this guy up. I want to know what this guy's story is. Oh my God, it's Golga! <laughs> Even JR's like, what the fuck is this shit? I like the way you almost adjusted your eye there. <laughs> you did your best Bell's palsy. <laughs> totally, totally wasn't meant, but anytime you see JR, totally. <laughs> it wasn't so it's, meant. Like, it's like you've got to do it to get the voice. <laughs> that, isn't that what impressions are, though, right? Aye, well, you see it with Jim Carrey, they all adjust their face to right, get certain exactly. sounds at their mouth. And, and just for the record, Jim uh, Jim Ross is a hero of mine. I absolutely adore Jim Ross and would never, ever see him in Just in case Jim Ross is watching and going, <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fuck you, <laughs> It's a shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would die if we ever got big enough to have Jim Ross on. I think it would be difficult not to laugh at you. See, oh. Mate, do you know what? I think the thing is, we we probably could have had Jim Ross <laughs> even at this point right now. The only thing is, because he's contractually obligated to be in with ad free shows, there's no way of really pulling him to oh, a show like yeah. this. The only time he'll go on a show is it's like it's Austin's show to promote ad free shows. Mm. Yeah, that kind of, kind of part of that circuit now. So what, that's kind of killed our chances. But hey, we can right. always try Barry Horowitz. Or get to Tanko and I. <laughs> exactly. Actually, Barry Horowitz would be a good one. And I'm sure you're going to explain to everybody why that would be a good one. <laughs> exactly. Not to keep everyone here too much longer. But we here at Jibber Jabber Podcast and the Wrestling Ramble side of Jibber Jabber Podcast are always saying, you know, guys, if you want to hear us do something, if you want to see us talk about something, you want, to, you want us to cover something, Write to us at jibberjabberpodcast.com. You can find all our socials there. Go to our Facebook. Set book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Todd. Don't use <laughs> this, this is the only place. I mean, come to us and I'll tell Todd. Y- uh, y'all leave me alone, you hear? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we actually had uh, someone contact us recently. His name was Nick Opal Whiskey. I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, Nick... Nick <laughs> it would uh, be fucking if it's no. <laughs> no, he's like, God damn! <laughs> 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 Nick Popowski, told you I'd call. <laughs> it's the nature boy. Woo! Equal House Letters. <laughs> Adam Lash number 3345. Equal House Letters. Woo! <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. I can't uh, so, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> so, Nick. Nick asked us to cover SummerSlam 95. Um, I think that was one of Nick's favourites. And, of course, why, why wouldn't we cover SummerSlam 95? So next week's episode will yeah. be us talking in long form about SummerSlam 95. Yeah. Um, 1995, which, uh, by the way, features matches like Undertaker versus Karma. That's Charles White. For those of you who don't, are not a bit familiar with that, new school guys, that's... Train. That's the the Godfather himself, who then became the Good Father during the Right to Censor. Then kind of went back to the Godfather and disappeared and came back. Him. To take I was, I, 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 to spoil it, I'm not going to raise the spoilers, but I, I've already started watching the show in preparation mm-hmm. for it. And seeing the hype package at the beginning of the show, I was pumped because I was like, "Wow, there's some good matches in here." Mate, well, got, mate honestly, you know what? That's one thing I was going to touch upon in wrestling, right? And I will leave this for next week, but I just want to say this one thing. See before every pay per view, like way back, probably right up till like 2002, 2003, there used to be a hype package before mm. the show that would have you like fucking, and then to top it off, the pyro would blow that shit up and everybody go mental. 
we're missing that in wrestling. They don't uh, treat it like it's special, so they, we don't feel like it's special. Because this is a pay per view that I do not remember and don't have a lot of. I was pumped for it. I was like, oh my god, we're going to get a rematch of Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramona ladder match. I was like, is Shawn actually going to win this one? And I don't know the result. I honestly don't know. So well, well, here's the thing. So like you just said there, uh, Shawn Michaels, pumped, man. Shawn Michaels versus Razor for uh, the Intercontinental Championship, and uh, Isaac Yankum. Versus Bret oh, Hart. Right? I, I was, I was, that's another one I was like, oh my God, I've never actually seen an Isaac Yankin match, so that's going to be a first Kane for me. Kane versus Bret Hart. In, in other words, Isaac Yankum. You know why they call him Isaac Yankum, yeah? Because I yank them. He was the booked against, uh, we'll speak about it next week, I suppose. Yes. We're going to waste it all. Uh, so yeah, so th- this is kind of the stuff that's going to come up next week. So next week, we're going to, what we'll do is we'll short, unless something catastrophic happens, we'll kind of shorten down our This Week in Wrestling, where we'll not cover Raw, SmackDown and AEW, but it'll just be, okay, from all three shows, here are our highlights, and then we'll move on cool. to SummerSlam 95, where we'll talk we'll about every match. <laughs> yeah, and we'll kind of just do that in long form. If anybody at home listening or watching wants us to do more pay-per-views, would like us to cover things, do a special episode on a specific superstar, we're always up for that kind of stuff, so get involved, let us know what you think. Oh, yeah. that we ask in return, maybe leave us a review, share it with your friends, just kind of help us get to the, the next level where we're able to do this more often and you know, just kind of keep that all moving. Yeah, we're quite happy for your segments. If there's anything you like or anything you don't like, let us know. We're not shy. Mm. Uh, we'd rather have that feedback. So Exactly. So next week, make sure you like us up on uh, Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. We are at Wrestling Ramble on Twitter. You can find the Jibber Jabber podcast on Facebook. Again, this is a, a show by Jibber Jabber podcast. This is a, the, yes. We've got the flagship, which is Jibber Jabber podcast, which we just released the the return of the deep dive with Sleepless in Seattle. Go check that on YouTube. I, every I watched that today, <laughs> as I was telling you. I actually watched that reviewing uh, with you and J Mac, and yeah. uh, I was surprised by the uh, the lack of farting throughout <laughs> it. <laughs> I think there was farts. So you just probably couldn't hear them. <laughs> These two are quite prominent for that. <laughs> oh, so says you, um, J Mac. <laughs> J Mac really enjoyed our wrestling ramble episode one as well. Oh, um, really? That's awesome. Something. Cool. I think. I think. I think he's a secret we lover of the. Either wrestling or well, I like to think that he's going to be like looking into this and being like, right now it's my time to learn. Yes, so we're the learning we, tree. We need to have him do this section of the Jabber Jabber at some points to jump in and kind of we yeah. can get his perspective yeah. as a non fan. It'd be good to have him on. I mean, to be fair, he's going to be kind of holed up with all the complaints that are going to come from people complaining about your Jim Ross impression. But, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, he, he's so PC. Jordan's so PC that it'll offend him anyway. And he'll, he'll leave. <laughs> that is quite the opposite. <laughs> quite the opposite. Oh, but, oh, <laughs> don't get <laughs> Yeah, listen to the show as you'll see what I mean. <laughs> exactly. So you can check out the, the flagship show at jabberjabberpodcast.com. You can find everything that we do on jabberjabberpodcast.com. You can find us Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Twitter, you can find Jibber Jabber, Jibber Jabber GB for Great Britain for the, the normal show. And you can find at Wrestling Ramble for our Twitter for this specific. I'm not going to create a Facebook for Wrestling Ramble as I kind of like to grow that audience on Twitter first as that's where it's needed. Uh, but you can check us out on every other podcast and platform. You can check us on YouTube where you can watch this or you can hear us exactly where you're listening to us now. You can uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Alexa, everywhere that you see the word podcast, this show exists. So hit it up, like, subscribe, share with your friends. You can ask for yourself an Alexa? Yeah, yeah. Jabber Jabber Podcast. Awesome. And, and just, just, just on that note before we end, and ending, I say to Alexa, Alexa, play Grilling JR podcast on Spotify. And then she responds with, okay, playing Grilling Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I mark it every day. <laughs> Lucas is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, that's the bottom line, because Todd and Kevin said so. <laughs>